Is it going to record properly with this full screen? Okay, let's see. So the first question is, let's address Tanya's question first. Okay, so uh, so she had a bearish, she had a bullish view on the underlying asset and she had a bearish view on uh, the eyeball chart. So therefore she decided according to our, remember, you remember our decision matrix, we have a option trading decision matrix. Okay, so based on that decision matrix, so she went short, she went short a put option. Okay, but then she found that she was actually, she, let's say she sold the put option at $3 and then after some time she found that the three option is actually moved to three and a half dollars so she's moved, losing money on a short uh, short put option but and she found that even though the underlying asset had gone up a little bit okay the eyeball and actually the eyeball view had gone wrong okay so the eyeball had uh, gone up instead of going down and that's what had pushed the option price up remember because if option prices because this is basically if you go back to your um, option price calculator the eyeball will be the input which will give you a model output which will this model output will be equal to the market price right so whenever market you increase the eyeball is. the option prices um, I think we'll just reduce this volume no, I'm a little afraid it might actually then my micro micro microphone volume. Let's live with this uh, uh, nuisance. Okay, so uh, if if the eyeball goes up, the option prices will go up. Okay, that's why we uh, have this relationship. So therefore, what must have happened? But in terms of what you have experienced, this is exactly why um, uh, you see why option trading is a little more complicated than pure spot no, trading. What you did in your previous uh, project. Okay because it, now you've got another problem to deal with no, but actually you've got even more problems mainly we focus on uh, mainly we focus on eyeball and the underlying asset movement and underlying asset price movement but there are other aspects also interest rates can also have an impact it's not a huge impact uh, then changes in the dividend all these kinds of things can have an impact but there the point is there are many variables involved okay when you're doing option trading all right Okay, so so this is the pro now the problem. This is what you have experienced firsthand. This is what happens in the world because the relationship is mathematical essentially. Okay, the, it, there are some other factors also, but mainly the value of an option is. Remember the old formula that we saw in that uh, on that website that I gave you option. I think options education, uh, the uh, one which is run by the Option Clearing Corporation. Okay, that website which shows you option value. The op total option premium consists of intrinsic value and time value. Okay, and where does so so fit everything into the frame work where does the intrinsic value come from what is driving the intrinsic value yeah to be more specific you have to say that it's being driven by the relationship between these two okay the exercise price and the underlying price okay it's being relation driven by the relationship between these two so once you buy the option once you sold, once she sold a put option the exercise price is frozen okay you can't change the exercise price but what is not frozen is the underlying price that keeps moving around so what is driving one of the thing major factors driving the option price is the relationship between the underlying price and the exercise price and since this is frozen essentially is the movement of the underlying asset price that's one major factor driving it the other major factor driving is is as you can see the eyeball the eyeball keeps moving around because option prices keep moving around and all that the model is doing is basically the model is recalibrating itself to find out which wall input is consistent with the market price okay and will give me the same uh, model output which is the same as the market price so actually the model is chasing the market price okay so now the eyeball keeps moving around because option prices keep moving around okay through the pressure pressure of the demand and supply so now this is another major input um, another major driver of the option price okay the eyeball okay so therefore now obviously whenever you have two factors this is quite clearly written in your notes also i don't want to go back right now but you'll see in your own notes uh, it's quite clearly written that there are two factors so the impact of one may outweigh the impact of the other right so in your case your underlying asset view was correct and the underlying asset price did move up but the magnitude of that movement or let's say to be more precise the impact of the magnitude of that movement on the option price okay was not sufficient to uh, outweigh the negative impact on the option price from the rise in eyeball negative impact actually the option price went up but the negative impact on your PNL right because the eyeball went up more 
than or the impact of the rise in eyeball on the option price was much more than the the, uh, the impact of the uh, movement in the underlying asset price so this is something that this can jolly well happen to you this is why I say that you have to focus on the eyeball as well and this is one of the lessons you learn when you do option trading that you can be right on this so in this case she was right on her underlying asset price view but still she lost money because she was not wrong uh, she was not right on the eyeball view is this clear use the mic if you can she we have lost the internet okay if we select the uh, of the call option for a later date, it should show the eyeball uh, that is expected. No, no, you were talking about a put option. Now you're talking about a call option. Any option. Okay, no, no. Now you're talking about you not your original problem. You're talking about a new problem. In, in, the, in that side, on option is there. Yeah. If I choose a call option, say for 8th of November, <coughs> or you can't choose a call option here. You basically, this is where you take a view. Here you are talking about the option chain. There are many options. Okay, let, let, let's go. Let's hear your. Let's hear your. This is this chart is one minute. This chart is only the I see when you get an eyeball chart, whether it's on the optionistics. Okay. Or on the TWS option trader also you can get eyeball chart that is more like a uh, I haven't tried their time series charts on eyeball they actually have the uh, cross-sectional data charts or if you are trying this one eyeball eyeball utility which is a shorter time frame so you can see the or Oracle eyeball charts in in orange okay whether whenever you're seeing this these eyeball charts are generated by taking average price of both puts and calls okay so therefore this is an eyeball index which is constructed because strictly speaking your th these eyeball charts typically that you see you don't normally see them for one particular option like the 65 uh, December call on Microsoft but that's a particular type of but that's a particular option okay a particular contract these eyeball charts are not constructed because there are so many contracts as you can see here itself you can see so many uh, well this is not the particular view but as you have seen before there are many many uh, option contracts in any given situation right even on Microsoft stock common stock you'll have many for any given expiry you'll have many options contract many different strikes many different expirations okay each of those is a contract each combination of strike and expiration and specifying call or put that becomes a particular contract so these charts are generated by averaging out averaging out those contracts for a particular expiry okay taking the average of those prices yeah so coming back to what is your question on call option yeah. if you go back to optionistics yeah on the same side I get voice is not coming through the mic but on the same side I get to choose uh, which call option and which strike price am I looking for the, the yeah. chart for Okay. No, I am coming here. Okay, I am not. I want to do it here now because this is bad. This side is bad, right? Yeah. So it may not respond. So I don't want to lose my picture here. Can okay. Yeah, yeah. Time? Okay. So I know I, you can do a lot of other stuff on this website. This part of it is free. Part of it is paid. Okay. So you can do a lot of stuff. But the the general principle, the what I would in general, I think what you're uh, what you're highlighting is a. Are you guys able to follow what we are? She's talking about, yeah. right? Okay. So um, now. Um, so what she's saying is particular she's tracking the eyeball of a particular option particular option contract so in general i would suggest that you don't track the eyeball of a particular option okay you can still do that but first you should learn how to track the eyeball charts for, for long periods of time which are constructed as an average of all option prices for a particular uh, maturity okay so those are average indices that's why you can see here it says iv index you see here it says iv index it doesn't say iv of a particular contract it's iv index okay all right who is talking here constantly who is this very disturbing don't talk while i'm while we are conducting there should be no uh, no noise at all uh, or any other kind of activity when we are conducting the class okay so uh, so 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 this is basically it so you can also what you're doing is going one step further and tracking the eyeball movement of a particular option you can do that also that's finer analysis so if you do that what was the problem you faced uh, the eyeball was bearish but uh, in that way but when I bought, when I sold that put, the prices went up, so I couldn't buy it at lower price. Hmm. Entered into losses. Yeah. 
Yeah, so that's a that's a problem. You're always going to face your view going wrong. That view going wrong is always going to be there, and thus, so you will never find a, a clear cut answer to that. That's why I keep saying that this is not uh, physics. Okay, uh, this is not engineering. Engineering, when you have a problem, usually you can figure out what the problem is, and you can fix it. And once you've fixed it, it doesn't come again. So here, there are no such clear cut answers in finance and economics because it's always answered. Like you see, yesterday we had some GDP data out for the U.S. Okay, so the average consensus forecast was one point nine. 1.9 is the actual data, but the forecast was 1.6. Okay, so 1.6 forecast. So you can see how much of a difference that is. This is just for one quarter GDP data. So these, so everything is full of errors because you can't. It's just like it's as uh, silly as trying to predict when an individual person is going to die. When the insurance companies predict, they predict for large groups of people. They say that in in say in India. Okay, by the age of 75, you know, X percent of the population will die and so on. So those kind of statements you can make statistically for large groups, but you can't make a statement about an individual person, right? So it's not possible. So it's so it's the same kind of problem that you're facing here. Okay, so that uncertainty will never go. So this problem you'll always have. You'll take a view on the underlying asset. You'll find that it goes wrong. You'll take a view on the eyeball. You'll find that it goes wrong. You just have to. That's why I said that risk management is so important. That's why we spend so much time talking about risk management. Okay, risk management is very important. That's how you have to. That, that's what ensures that you have to control your losses, so that you don't lose big on one particular trade, and you have capital left over to play for other trades, right? Okay. So uh, is this is this sufficient? Okay. So the same problem. Essentially, you face the same problem by looking at a particular eyeball of a particular option contract. Yeah. But the fundamental problem is the same. And that problem will always got to remain. That's why you need to have before you go in, you need to have a plan as to when are you going to exit the option. Okay, so either you have a view on the, you have a point on the underlying asset price which you look at. Okay, here you have a view on the underlying asset price. Maybe you have some view here that if it goes below this, then you will exit the long. You will change your bullish view. And on the eyeball, maybe if you have a view that maybe it goes above this, then you'll change your view. So you need to have a clear-cut plan that if my original plan doesn't work out, what's my backup? What's my risk management plan? At what point do I exit the position? Okay, or you can also have, which I think is less uh, scientific, that you can also have a view that on any option I will not lose more than 25% of the premium. That's a little bit more mechanical, okay, because the market really doesn't care about how much money you paid. Okay, should be based on market meaningful uh, market movement. So I think the first method is better, but you can have that method also. It will not really uh, be a problem in the long run. Okay, all right. And any other? You had a problem about when to take profit. Yeah. So when to take profit, the logic is the same. Remember what we discussed for spot, yes. all those take profit elements. Yes. So you should have already figured out your trading system from before. You should have already had an estimate. That entire calculation that we went through in your trade risk file. Yes. Yeah, in your calc file, there is a sheet called trade risk, right? So under trade risk, the same exercise you should have gone through before starting your option project. Okay, now your period has been lengthened. Okay, the option project period has been lengthened now, so this is a surprise. But otherwise, you would have known the pre period. You would have predicted how many trades you are going to do. You would have estimated what is your loss percentage, right? And accordingly, you would have uh, figured out your, you know, what your total risk capital is one million dollars. Okay, so in that case, you would have figured out what is your maximum risk per trade. So you can just take one crude way of doing it is to just take the option premium itself, uh, and actually, that's a more deterministic way that the entire. Suppose your maximum trade risk is five thousand dollars. In that case, you don't spend more than five thousand on any particular option. This is the buy side. Now on the sell side, you have to therefore now whatever price you sell it at, you make sure that you sell the number of contracts. Make sure you have a plan to exit where the loss should not exceed five thousand. Is this clear? Yes. Yeah, everybody. How we are translating the same logic that we used for risk calculations from the spot trading environment, we are now transferring because option trading also the the importance of risk management does not go away. You can lose a lot of money just trading options, okay? Because a lot of the options, most of the options expire worthless. 
So that means most of the people who are buying options are actually wasting their money because they don't get to exercise it because it doesn't come to a situation where they can exercise it. So this is the statistic in the option market that most of the options expire worthless. Okay. So therefore, uh, you can also lose a lot of money. So you still, therefore still need to have a very, very strict risk management plan that before you have to trade in the systematic manner, any kind of trading venture that you're doing. Okay. You have to approach it in a systematic manner that what is the period, what is the risk capital, how many trades am I going to do. Those estimates may be a little bit off. You may estimate 180 trades, you may do 200 trades, okay. But I don't think if you go with this kind of a systematic approach, I don't think you're going to get into a disastrous situation. Most of the time you can see problems even with well-known money managers like you know this year, have you guys heard of Ray Dalio? I might have told you to uh, look up Ray Dalio. He has a lot of uh, videos on YouTube. He's one of the leading uh, hedge fund managers. Okay, so you can see how the what I kept saying about how this business is so uncertain. Even a top money manager like H Ray Dalio, who runs Bridgewater Associates, you might have. Uh, so the, Ray Dalio has some interesting comments on organizational uh, behavior, also how to motivate people. They run their company in a very unique way. Okay, they have something called an idea of meritocracy. So even from an OB perspective, you can think about that. But Ray Dalio is one of the top fund managers uh, in the world. Okay, they run Bridgewater Associates. But this year they are losing money. Okay, so this they are they are underperforming the rest of the market quite badly this year. So this happens all the time. Even top money manager, many many top money managers have returned all their outside money, all the OPM that they were managing. What is OPM? other people's money they have returned all their loan by big money managers like Leon Cooperman all these people okay uh, they have uh, because they are they are not in not able to make money okay and now they just manage what they call like a family office they manage their own funds because so they're all billionaires okay so they have enough money to manage but they manage their own funds even Soros George Soros has returned all outside money okay several years ago because Soros also faced a situation Soros is one of the most successful uh, money managers ever okay so he made a billion dollars in a couple of days betting against the British pound okay basically shorting cable shorting cable into the uh, uh, sorting uh, uh, sterling against all the European currencies okay when there was a currency crisis but even Soros then eventually started making losses and he got so frustrated eventually he gave up all the outside money and just managed his own money because obviously when you're managing outside money there's a lot more pressure okay there's a lot more scrutiny so this problem is always going to be there uh, and therefore that's why you see that uh, you know th this this basically shows you how uncertain the business is so the main defense that you have okay and many money managers have blown up quite spectacularly people have lost six billion dollars in a couple of weeks okay the fund blows up you, what you really want to avoid is those kind of disasters okay what you really want to avoid is those kind of disasters where the fund blows up and this, if you have this kind of strict risk management okay then you will not have uh, these kind of problems okay so the same logic applies are you following yes. the same way of thinking about risk the same logic applies okay so uh, your your um, your uh, problem of take profit same logic remember you have to have a f idea of how much money you're trying to make that if you want to use that kind of take a targeted take profit otherwise you use it either see take profit is only two approaches to it either you use targeted take profit okay or you use a trailing stop remember we had all these discussions okay so if you use a trailing stop life is much simpler life is much simpler if you use a trailing stop yes, sir. right so if I've gone long here and then the market is here. let's say if I've gone long here and then the market has uh, when I went long here my stop was over here when the market went up and made a new high I moved my stop over here so I don't have to do much work I just have to observe the market and just mechanically keep moving the stop okay and then now that the market has made another new high I move my stop from here to here is this clear is everyone following this logic trailing stop very simple initially go long here with a stop over here market makes a new high over this so now I'm able to move it to the <coughs> next higher low from which the new high is made then another new high is made and I'm able to move it to this low okay trailing stop very simple okay which means you keep following the trailing stop methodology for both your um, underlying asset price view 
and your eyeball view because remember your net option view so whether you sell a port or buy a call or whatever is really driven it's composed of the underlying asset view and the eyeball view so you have to now do this trailing stop uh, procedure on both the underlying asset chart and the eyeball chart so it's a little more complicated obviously it's a lot of work okay but once you have the framework once you have a structure you can uh, keep on repeating this uh, you know thing for all the different markets the, the same process right so then at whenever whenever you have any kind of disruption to your view you can unwind the option position at whatever the market price is at that point of time right but the only problem with this view is you don't really know how much uh, what the option price will be when when you finally exit okay and the other op other way to do it is to have the targeted take profit which you already discussed i think we discussed it in the beginning of this course right remember we had the discussion on how to set the targeted take profit by therefore you have to start with the total uh, profit target that you have and then work backwards with the other parameters of your system that those videos are already there there's a historical calculation so you can go back go back and look at that okay all right does it clear your problem of take profit there are basically only two ways to go either targeted take profit or trailing stop okay all right so let's all right so we were looking at um option payoff profiles did we finish all the option payoff profiles okay let's look at option chapter 10. long call we've done what is this who said short call why is this a short call hmm? no you have to say when you say something you should not just say it because after long call comes short call so what no, 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 you have to look at the graph and explain. You have to look at the graph and explain. You have to look at the graph and explain. Why is this a short call? What is it? Yeah? Put option what? Long, short, what? Long, the answer is actually written on the, the answer is written on the figure so but if you want to test yourself if you want to test yourself and you want to um, you know uh, make sure that you understand the logic then you should not uh, just blindly read what is there on the chart because then you're not learning anything you should try to figure out first of all you should try to figure out what is this here actually that there seems to be a line below the the zero line okay okay there seems to be a portion below the zero line so if it's below the zero line then what is it likely to be loss or profit loss, loss. okay so if there is a part where there is a loss showing then what is it likely to be a, is it a long option position or a short option position try to figure it out logically otherwise it doesn't otherwise you're not learning anything you're just mechanically going through the classes one minute is my question clear what is the i'm sure i'm trying to teach you a methodology how will you analyze these chart graphs you look at the graph you see that there's a portion which is below the zero line okay if the zero line below the zero line now i'll have to cut marks for tarun and srishti there's too much activity going on i don't know what maybe you want to move somewhere srishti come here no no you guys have been dis uh, disturbing for a long time actually so i'll just uh, is this your no 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 you have been talking for a long time i'm noticing but i'm in a particular flow so i'm not disturbing the flow where is today what is today what is now where are you going out garvit has already gone out so wait wait <laughs> option payoff profiles we started here we'll just put it here maybe today is uh, 31 10 
Of course, it is your note. No, no. Session outline is your note. So you don't even know which is your note. <laughs> you can't become a money changer because you don't know which is your note. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Okay. All right. So this should be in bold. Okay. So let's go through the book. Now, first of all, let's let's work. A, let's figure out an algorithm. Okay. This is like an algorithm, like a mental algorithm in your head, where you will figure out how the ans- how to answer this question instead of just reading. You've noticed the chart that there is a part below the zero line. So that has to mean what? Profit or loss? Loss. 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 Okay. So if it's a loss, then what is it likely to be? Is it a... Garbhat, when you go out, please make sure that you come back on time because so others are waiting. Time, okay, good. Every day you go out, you seem to have like... <laughs> this. Uh, okay, now you can go. <laughs> okay, so if there's a... One minute, one minute. If there is a loss, if there is a loss, then what is it likely to be? Is it likely to be a long option position or a short option position? Question. Burma. I can't even see you. So, is my question clear? Yes, sir. What then? What is the answer to my question? I think it will be, be a long position. Why? Why is there? If, when there is a loss, why is it that uh, when there is a loss, it should uh, lead me to infer that this must be for a long position? It was writing to be short position because. Uh, now you change your answer. Yes. Kanika, what is your answer? Is my question clear? I look at a chart, I look at the chart and I see that there is a part below the zero line which is flat. So it's this flat flat part below the zero line. Okay. So it should, should seems to be showing a constant negative quantity in some scenario. This is just a scenario analysis. This is an expiration diagram. This is a scenario analysis. Okay. So in, in some in in one part of the graph, which is a many, many, many scenarios, it seems to be showing me a constant negative quantity, <coughs> not a growing negative quantity, but a constant negative quantity. So if it's a constant negative quantity being shown in, in quite a few scenarios, okay, then is this likely to be talking about a long option? position or a short option position yes is my question clear now you can see the graph yeah short option position why what because it is showing loss but it's a constant loss so do you have a constant loss in a short option position This is showing it from the trader's point of view. The person either he has sold an option or he has bought an option. Okay, anybody? Srishti? What is the answer to this question? This part of the question? Is it a long position or a short position that is being portrayed here? Short position. Short position. Same as Kaneka. Same as Verma's second answer. Why? So the first there is negative point. So short position in a short option position, do you have constant negative quantity? How will you have a constant negative quantity? Okay, let's not waste now. This is the problem. This is why I I prefer to use lecture. Now, I hope you all guys understand, okay, that you have to remain interested, okay? You, uh, I can't have, uh, I mean, maybe a lecture, uh, I mean, an interactive method like a case discussion method is more uh, engaging, okay? But it takes up a lot of time, right? So you can see that this is why I generally, you have to be interested and uh, I mean, it's not my job to make you, to make finance interesting to you. Okay, now let's quickly answer now. Tanya, what is the answer? Long why? Okay, so it's basically the, it's a long position because the long position is showing you the situation, the constant loss. The premium is a constant premium. Once you pay your car insurance premium, the insurance company doesn't, it's too, it's too fast. It's too much noise. Uh, Garvin, we can't have that. It'll disturb the audio. It's disturbing me. Just reduce the fan speed a little bit. The AC is also running, right? No, sir, it's not working. AC is not working. No, I think that, that's still too loud actually because maybe at this point I don't know which one is it. There's too much noise. I don't want so much noise. Just reduce it one more st- one more notch. Yeah, 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 that's fine. Okay, now let's, okay guys, let's not make so much commotion here now. Let's uh, concentrate on what's going on. Okay, so 
it's it should tell you straight away that it's showing a long position for profile because in a long position what do you do it shows it from the trader's perspective okay not the opposite guy's perspective the trader what is he doing and he's buying an option then he's putting up some premium and that premium is constant once you have paid the car insurance premium for one year the insurance company doesn't come and take more premium from you after a few months you have paid it once up shot uh, one up front <coughs> So it's a constant loss means this must be showing the situation where the parts where the scenarios where the option is being uh, is expiring worthless. The option is not being exercised. So if I have paid car insurance premium and I don't have any, of course, I don't get a net benefit anyway. But if I have bought, let's say if I bought an option and I don't ex exercise the option, then uh, because the market doesn't move in my favor, then what happens? My option premium is a loss, but it's a constant loss right so in all these scenarios what it is showing you is this is the constant loss where when in this case this is the put option with a strike price of 70 so if i bought a put option with a strike price of 70 and the market price is 100 will i exercise the option yes gulati yes, sir. will we exercise the option if the put option is uh, strike price of 70 and the underlying asset price at expiration is at 100 will i exercise the put option What happened? You're focusing on something else. No, sir. That's why you're not. not sir, in you're the last class, uh, we uh, went from a similar situation where I said we have to exercise it, but I was having a minus seven uh, dollar loss. Whereas Sakshi had a minus five dollar loss. So I'm getting into that dilemma. No, no. Where is the question of all that? We are now at 100. I'm talking about a scenario where you paid whatever price you paid for the option. Okay, you paid five seven dollars for the option. The strike price of the put option is seventy dollars, and at expiration the market price is hundred. The question is very simple: Will you exercise the put option or not? Right? Why will you not exercise? Sir, because uh, then I will be having a loss of around twenty three. No, your loss will not be. You will not have a loss. Okay, again, it doesn't work like that. First of all, this is the right the way, right way to think about this answer and the right way to answer. Remember, you have to always talk to a computer. Okay, so if I'm asking you, if you bought a put option with a strike price of seventy, and the option is and the underlying asset price at expiration is hundred, will you exercise the put option? So the answer to that should be to a computer. The put option confers on the holder the right to sell at the strike price okay in this case the put option holder has the right to sell at 70 but the market price is 100 so why would he sell at 70 when he can sell at 100 so therefore he will forego the option so he will forego the right to sell at 70 because he can sell in the market at 100 and he will let the option premium whatever was paid that goes for a toss anyway okay that's a loss okay so that's why and you paid how much seven dollars premium so that's why when the uh, that's why when uh, the other day when I was plotting uh, bit by bit, some people were wondering why I was Hardik was wondering why am I plotting like in baby steps? You watch this, then draw a parallel, then draw a perpendicular because I want to make sure that people's fundamentals are clear. So you're doing a scenario analysis here. This is a scenario analysis. Okay, you bought a seven uh, seventy put with a price of seven dollars. When the underlying asset price at expiration is hundred, you don't exercise. Therefore, what is the loss? And the other rule in these expiration diagrams, hockey diagrams, is we don't account for the time value of money. Okay. So therefore, when the underlying asset price is hundred, you don't exercise the option. So your PNL is minus seven. This is clear to everyone. Okay. So your PNL is minus seven. So in all these situations, you don't exercise up to seventy. Up to seventy, you don't exercise, and therefore up to seventy, your loss is seven. Is this clear? Are you following now, Kanika? Sir, actually, I won't exercise up to seventy-seven. I won't exercise up to seventy-seven. No, not seventy-seven. Not seventy-seven. Okay, this is also another uh, twist. So we'll one minute, one minute here. Okay, so uh, here also I have to cut marks. Garvit and there also you have just also a lot of talk. We have to separate you two also, Garvit and others. There's too much. I try not to waste time on this, but okay. All right. 
Guys, okay, now uh, Gulati has thrown another uh, curveball. He is now saying that we should exercise below 77. Below 77. One minute. We are talking about a put option. Okay, let's be clear. We are talking about this option. Yes, sir. We are talking about a put option for which we have paid seven dollars, and the strike of the put is seventy dollars. Okay, so now you are saying we should exercise this put when the uh, exercise strike price is seventy-seven or above. No, no, strike price doesn't move. Once you, once you see, ah, don't say exercise price, market price. Exercise price is not market price. Exercise price is strike price. You can say that, okay? But are you? So let's get one thing very clear. Once you have bought the option, then all this stuff like exercise price, expiration date, call or put, all these things are frozen. You can't change them anymore. What changes is the underlying asset price keeps moving around and the eyeball keeps moving around. Okay. So now we are talking only about the underlying asset price. So you bought a seventy dollar put. You bought a seventy put for seven dollars. Okay. Now the underlying asset price is at hundred. Uh, uh, what you are so now you are trying to give us a rule as to when we will exercise with respect to the underlying asset price. So what is the rule that you are giving us? Uh, according to me, we should go for any price above seventy seven. So let's say 100 is above 77. 100 is above 77. So at 100 we should exercise. Yes, sir. We should exercise. We should exercise the put option. No, sir. We should exercise. Why? Below 63. Below 63 is. Okay. Non-way. Let's first one minute. One minute. First. Okay. Let's first satisfy Golati. Okay. Make sure he is clear. Are you satisfied with the answers that we are giving you? Okay. Sir. You are saying that we should exercise above 77. So 100 is above 77. So you are saying I should exercise a 70 put. The 70 put gives me the right to do what? Sir. To sell at 70. Yes, put means I am having a right to sell. Yeah. But I will be selling that put option somewhere like if I am having the market price at 77. If I am if I'm having the right to sell. No, now we are talking about 77. We are talking about 100. You said anything above 77. Yes, sir. So we have taken 100. Okay. 100 is above 77. So at hundred, you are saying I should exercise. Yes, I sell my put option. You sell, you sell your put option. Because it's giving me a right to sell. We are not talking about selling the put option. <coughs> we are talking about exercising the put option. There are two different things. Remember that when we, that's why I have forbidden you from exercising early exercise in your project, because most of the time it does not make sense to do early exercise. Okay, most of the time it doesn't make sense to do early exercise because you will see that even out of the money put options, even out of the money options have some time value, right? Okay, so if you exercise the option, you capture only the intrinsic value. If you go back here, and I don't know where it is in your notes, maybe we can go back a little bit. It's a long way back. Where do we have intrinsic value? Yeah, here. Okay, guys, here, look at this. Let's revise all this stuff again. So, a lot of the basics. See, this is what I uh, mean by you need to go back and revise continuously and uh, satisfy yourself in your head that you have understood this problem. Pro you have understood the entire thing. The total value of an option consists of intrinsic value and time value. <coughs> Why have I told you not to exercise options early? Most of the time we don't really exercise even American options. We, there are some exceptions, but in general we don't because it the value of the option. Okay, here we are talking really about the price of the option. So we should use the price term. But so let's say the price of the option is equal to intrinsic value plus time value. Intrinsic value you have understood yes, is the profit you can make by exercising the option right now. Okay. So then even when when there are out of money out of the money option. Okay, like this one. This is a seventy put, and the market price is at hundred. So this option is in the money or out of the money, Shivam? Is this option in the money or out of the money? 
out of the money right so out of the money options they don't have any intrinsic value okay we say we can just say zero intrinsic value okay but this option let's say there are like 150 days to expiry this option will still have some time value yes sir okay because 150 days uh, basically the time value reflects the fact that in 150 days this option can move into the money that's why there is time value okay Be have you understood this why is there time value for out of the money options you can say this option is out of the money there should not have any value okay but it's got 150 days to expiry so a 70 put a 70 put when the market price at 100 it has no intrinsic value okay because you can't make any profit by exercising it but it's still if the put is worth if the put is a like 150 day put it will still have some time value because and that time value reflects the fact that in 150 days all kinds of stuff can happen right so the market can suddenly shoot up or suddenly drop and the put can have value okay so therefore that is what is being reflected in the time value okay so therefore that is why one of the reasons for the so first let's recap this the main reason i'm telling you that uh, one is to avoid the complexity but second in general we don't exercise even american options early because if you exercise the option how much do you capture Intrinsic. only the intrinsic value okay because you'll exercise that's what intrinsic value talks about basically how much can you make by exercising the option right now okay and squaring your position in the market okay but then if you sell the option in the it's one option is one alternative is for you the two uh, exercise the option okay Gulati, pay attention don't look at your phone or whatever so then you'll understand the problem okay so um, one one alternative for you is to exercise the option early okay when you're in, sitting on an in the money option you you have two alternatives one is to exercise the option early and the other option is to sell the option in the marketplace yeah the other option is to sell the option contract so gulati make sure you understand this difference there's a difference between selling the option contract in the market and exercising that option okay yeah because when you are selling the option in the market you are not getting into any kind of involvement with the underlying asset you bought an option and you are selling the option or you sold the option you are buying back the option okay so therefore you don't have any involvement with the underlying asset if you are exercising the option which is the other alternative okay in that case you are getting involved in the underlying asset market because you are exercising the put option which gives you the right to sell the underlying asset okay and then you are selling the underlying asset and then uh, squaring that short position in the market for the underlying asset so you get involved in the underlying asset okay so in one alternative you exercise the option and in one alternative you sell the option in the market the reason we generally say that most of the time we don't do early exercises because if you do early exercise you will capture only the intrinsic value are you following the scheme yes sir. make sure everybody understands this that the price of an option contains two parts the intrinsic value and the time value okay so even out of the money options have time value because it reflects the fact that which is partly a function of the eyeball and partly a function of the expiration uh, length of time okay so more length of time means greater length of time means more time value because that much more time for all kinds of stuff to happen right so therefore if you sell the option in the market you capture both these elements if you sell the option in the market you will capture both the time value and the intrinsic value because they are reflected in the option price are you following what i'm saying yes, Kanika, pay attention to what is being discussed i think we'll have to make you also a permanent member of the first bench because you're not uh, uh, paying attention getting lost in other stuff so uh, so is this clear the price of the option will always reflect both intrinsic value and time value so if you sell the option in the market that second alternative you capture both the elements okay and if you, uh, you exercise the option and to go for the first alternative then you're capturing only the intrinsic value okay so in general you'll always there are some few exceptions but in general therefore the uh, the second alternative is always better because you're capturing more value right are you following is everyone clear about this this part you have understood now Pilati? now you come back to your point you're saying $70 put so let's get this uh, clear first okay that when the underlying asset price is at 100 and the uh, strike of your put is 70 you're holding a 70 put okay you will not exercise it because 
by exercising what are you by, by, when you have a put you have the right to sell the underlying asset so the logic should be like this that a put gives you the right to sell the underlying asset at the strike price here the strike price is 70 but the market price of the underlying asset is 100 so why will I sell something at 70 when I can sell it in the market at 100 so I would rather let my whatever premium I've got paid earlier let it just lapse as a sunk cost okay I don't want to do this extra uh, generate this extra loss okay here the inter option has no intrinsic value okay or zero intrinsic value is everyone clear about this so now we come to the other point that you are trying to get at okay which is we need to evolve some kind of rule as to which is now the kink in the curve okay so remember one of the things let me show you here that if we go back to our where is the yeah okay this always needs to be made smaller all right now we can see this so which type of instrument have we uh, classified as having non-linear payoffs options right only options have been shown as having non-linear payoffs okay so why do we use so you now get to know one more part of this framework why has it been written here uh, why has it been written this way this part is very clear that all these other instruments I'm trying to indicate by this that these are all linear payoffs and this is got all non-linear payoffs why do we say that if you look at the payoffs of course here we are looking are we looking no, at profit profiles or uh, payoff profiles in this chart figure 10.2 no, no, it's it's an an re -established. Re -established. Are we looking at profit profiles or payoff profiles? Yes, Sukriti. Are we looking at profit in 10.2? Are they showing a profit profile or a payoff profile? Profit profile. Why not a payoff profile? What is the difference theori theoretically? What is the difference between a profit payoff, a profit and a payoff, in the context of options? You forgot it. We have discussed this. It's in your notes also. Yes. Hmm? One minute, one minute. When, uh, let me hear what maybe you can use the mic. Yeah. So is everyone clear about see basic questions and this has all been covered before. So if you're a serious finance student, you should be uh, you know your attitude should be okay this concept was touched upon you i think you're smart enough to understand that this is a concept am i is that correct you have understood you have detected that there is a concept being discussed here so you should be clear your attitude as a serious finance student should be to go through the notes and the videos see wherever there's a concept being discussed uh, that you you can easily detect that there's some concept being discussed here your job is to be clear about the concept once you're clear about the concept you don't have to study for the exam everything is clear you'll know it for life okay but you're not you guys are not doing that you have to pursue it like that you have to pursue the uh, knowledge aspect of uh, your uh, career as a finance student just getting grades and taking a degree and then putting on a suit going for the interview that doesn't make you a that's not a career strategy for long-term success okay you have to master the concepts okay yes power you know, the difference between the strike price and the underlying price and profit is uh, when we no, the price price for the payoff is, is profit okay correct so she has given the right answer that profit the payoff just shows you what is the difference between the uh, the underlying asset price and the strike price so if you draw a payoff diagram essentially what will happen is this part will shift up okay this basically will the loss part will disappear okay in a payoff diagram okay so you'll see there are some payoff diagrams below if we can see them maybe yeah these are the payoff diagrams okay these are payoff diagrams because here you notice the payoff diagrams they don't have that part below or above the uh, zero line okay 
because the premiums are not being reflected in the payoff diagrams okay so the profit is basically nothing but the payoff payoff is like a gross profit profit is like a net profit you can think of it that way if you want to think of it okay so the payoff has been adjusted uh, by the premium to give you the profit okay so that's the basic concept which we already covered it okay so now let's say why did i use the uh, word here non-linear payoffs okay in in the markets normally we use the word payoff but you can also have profit profile the the statement will still be correct okay so you can hear for the purposes of this discussion between linear and non-linear we can just have uh, we can use either payoffs or profits for the purposes of this discussion okay because the chart will look the same why is it non-linear you notice this this particular kink we are departing from our existing discussion on the put particular put and and the profile uh, but here we are just trying i'm just trying to highlight one more part of, one more part of the learning linear versus non-linear instruments why are options and sometimes what happens in the market is people will just say options are non-linear instruments okay this is just a shortcut what actually they should be saying to be very very strict is they are instruments with non-linear payoffs okay but this is how we talk normally because we just omit one word but you have to be very clear that whenever you're saying options are non-linear instruments what you're really saying is they are instruments with non-linear payoff profiles or non-linear profit profiles why do we say non-linear because you can see clearly there is a kink in the curve it's not a straight line okay so that's why when you look at that framework why have they been listed as non-linear payoffs okay because this is big this is the reason okay because there is that kink okay because there are certain situations now we'll go back to that so this is just to show you and uh, you will see later on when we come to uh, when we come to futures we have it here actually we can just in, uh, since i've taken a departure for this i'll just do this uh, i'll just cover this topic so whether you look at payoffs or profit profiles just look look at payoffs for this so you can understand why options are called non linear payoffs instruments with non linear payoffs okay so loosely people will just say non linear instruments now why are all the others linear payoffs why do all the others have linear payoffs let's understand that this is also an important part of the learning so once again this becomes a concept okay you have to make sure that you're very clear about this concept these are all small small concepts modules that we are discussing your job is to make sure that you understand the concept not just read and memorize and try to do something in the exam okay so this is uh, as far so everyone is clear why options are called non-linear because there is a kink in the in the curve in the payoff curve now let's look at this book is also in your uh, finance reference from the last semester cme option strategies 25 option strategies so i will not have time to cover all this your job as a serious finance student is to make sure that all the basics fundamentals which we are covering in the class you're clear about that and then you use all these references which i've given you then the sheldon natenberg book is also a very good book okay hull you can read a little bit but hull is not very uh, not of great practical value okay there's some information there the really good book is the sheldon natenberg book on option volatility if you really want to get deep into option trading okay that's the book that you should read okay and there's another good book by um, Baird called option market making that is even more technical uh, slightly more difficulty uh, difficult higher level of difficulty than the the natenberg book uh, so uh, anyway let's look at this so now i'm trying to show you why do we say that um, all the other types of instruments in this case we are talking just about futures okay uh, let's just talk about spot and we'll, we'll just this will be easier to understand okay in this book it's being shown for futures but all these things spot futures forward swaps all of them we say linear payoffs why let's look at it this way okay so this is let's say a spot instrument okay so i've gone let's say i've gone long the spot at this point of time okay i've gone long the spot at this price so this is the spot price okay and this is the pnl the same kind of plot that we saw in the payoff diagrams okay here you have the pnl you can see plus minus below the zero line okay and this thing is just the uh, the underlying asset price same kind of plot okay underlying asset price this is there in that cme option strategies book this is page six okay i'm just looking at the i'm just trying to show you here why uh, for spot futures forwards etc all will have the same kind of profile 
why do we call them linear payoff profiles this is why you can see this is linear this is a straight line okay now let's understand this clearly why this is linear okay suppose let's just put some numbers on it let's say this is uh, 100 okay so a is equal to 100 let's say a is equal to 100 so i bought let's say the underlying i bought the common stock of microsoft at 100 okay now i do this this is a scenario analysis chart this is also just like the payoff profiles and the profit profile this is a scenario analysis okay so i bought the thing and we are not accounting for time value of money so i bought it sometime let's say i bought it three months ago and now three months later let's say the price so how is this plot generated obviously this is generated by joining a whole bunch of dots which are falling like this we join them and form a straight line okay so let's say how, how did this dot come about okay so let's say this is 100 and let's say this is 180 okay and let's say this is uh, so this is 180 okay so i bought it at 100 some time ago and then now when i'm calculating my uh, pnl i find that the underlying asset price that microsoft common stock is at 180 so am i making money or losing money making money so i bought it at 100 now it's at 180 and how much money am i making 80 so this plot is basically a scenario analysis it's supposed to show me uh, my pnl for different values of the underlying asset price okay very simple okay so here when the underlying asset price value is 180 i calculate that i've made uh, 80 minus 100 I've, uh, 180 minus 100 i made 80 dollars profit okay so here i drop a perpendicular this this one should be here if you draw the parallel this is the this should be 80 discluding commissions and all that okay this will be 80 all right so similarly now let's look at uh, let's say this is say uh, at this point let's say the market is say uh, say 40 this is 40 dollars this price say this is 40 dollars okay so how is this plot coming about this is 40 dollars so if i bought the stock at 100 and the price now is 40 dollars am i making money or losing money losing money how much sixty dollars okay so i'm losing sixty dollars so against this value of 40 i have to plot against here there should be sixty dollars is this clear so if you plot it like this if you do this exercise for yourself you can do a spreadsheet and calculate different values and then you can just use the spreadsheet graphing features and see and generate the graph you can test it for yourself i'm just trying to save myself that time okay but you will see that if you take a spot equity position okay or even if you take a futures position okay not accounting for time value of money and funding costs and all that okay if you draw a simple uh, payoff profile you will get this kind of line is everyone clear yes are you following you plot it yourself and see for your own feeling uh, for, to get the feel of the whole thing for yourself okay but you will get this kind of profile this will happen whether you're doing futures spots forwards okay all of them will have this kind of payoff profile this is a payoff profile for long underlying asset for long underlying asset okay let's look at this is shown in this book as long futures this is your first diagram but long futures long spot long forwards as far as the payoff is concerned without time value of money same output this book is there in your finance reference you can download it okay now let's look at this okay so you already got the answer before that it is short futures which means it is short spot okay so we'll take the same example so let's say i'm short tesla and this price is let's say 200 dollars so if i short tesla 200 dollars okay and then the when i calculate my pnl okay the uh, uh, underlying asset price is 140 dollars let's say this is 140 here at this point it's 140 so am i making money Yes. or losing my making money okay so i'm making how much 60 dollars not counting commissions i'm making 60 dollars okay so here this one should be showing this level against the plot of uh, 140 the uh, the um, plot here on the prop pnl uh, axis should be showing 60 dollars is this clear okay now if you show this is let's say this is uh, uh, 280 this this let's say this price is 280 obviously it's not to scale uh, when i'm pointing out this stuff so this is 280 okay at 280 you're lo losing 80 dollars okay so then the plot here should be minus 80 okay this is clear so if you plot 
the short future short spot short futures any kind of short forward that's why these are called linear instruments because you see that the payoff profile is linear you don't see the kink in the curve that you see with this both are in PDF here you see the kink in the curve in the case of options okay whether it's a payoff curve or the profit curve okay you see the kink in the curve that's why it's called uh, non-linear okay and this this one does not have a kink in the curve so it's called linear okay so this is another concept that we should be clear about that why are options called instruments with non-linear payoff profiles and all the other stuff spot forward futures op uh, future swaps okay all those we call them futures forward swaps uh, we call them uh, instruments with linear payoff profiles is this clear okay so another concept that you learn and it is made so easy for you that uh, now we can go back we can un we can make this bigger it's at hundred percent okay so it's made so easy for you that everything is how do we search get ourselves we'll search for others and come here <laughs> okay all right so uh, another concept that we have learned all the concepts are written down for you as subtopics in your notes so you know already you're getting a heads up that this is a concept i better be clear about this concept okay so you have to struggle with yourself and learning a concept obviously is hard work maybe you're not used to it from your undergrad days okay but you have to make this transition because you're now studying for a professional degree companies don't care about what degrees you have or what grades you got okay companies care about what you can do how clear your concepts are how confidently you can operate in the in the in the workspace right so therefore you have to be clear about your concept that's a new way of learning you have to uh, push yourself to understand that understanding concepts is always difficult okay it's much harder and than, than just mugging stuff up okay I'm just coming to you so uh, you make sure that you do it this way otherwise you're not you're wasting your time you're not getting value from the program and once you understand the concept you'll understand it for life you don't have any and you can build further on that okay yeah you you use the mic use the mic so futures is another type of derivative. So why doesn't it have a kink? Why doesn't it have? Have a curve, kink in its curve. Because what is the what is the let's go back one second. Okay, I need not have done seventy five. All right. What is this graph showing you with my imperfect uh, you know <laughs> diagramming capabilities? But what have I tried to show you here? That this linear payoffs covers all these from cash to swaps so here there is a little bit of overlap you see now futures forwards and swaps are derivatives but they are not derivative all derivatives do not have non-linear payoffs <coughs> what is the format what is the graph for framework showing you all derivatives do not have linear payoffs so the characteristic of a product when you're looking at a product or an instrument sometimes we refer to these as products okay or instruments or types of contracts these are just spe specifically with your legal background as well you should think of it as particular types of contracts okay contract will have terms terms that confer certain types of rights okay so that's where the the nature unique nature of these instruments comes from so uh, now these are all uh, derivative uh, these are all derivative markets so all derivative markets do not have non-linear payoff profiles all, all derivative instruments do not have non-linear payoff profiles the what is the framework showing you framework is not showing you that all derivatives have a linear so the fact that an instrument is a derivative product the property of being a derivative product okay is independent of the property of being a product or instrument with a non-linear or linear payoff profile this is a totally different aspect okay it's like saying you are an MBA student and then do you have high power do you have glasses now all MBA students may not have glasses okay so it's a totally different aspect of your uh, identity okay is this clear okay yeah so so but anyway it's a good question because anytime you have any kind of doubt you should ask the question that is how you learn that that is why that's the only reason you come to class for the privilege of asking questions otherwise you can just sit at home and watch the video okay so we go back to our full 100% size okay 
let's go back and quickly do these exercises. So where is Gulati? He has disappeared. <laughs> he, has, he has disappeared for a long time. He doesn't seem to have, uh, I don't know where he has gone. Send him a call. Send him a call for. No, don't go out. No, don't use that. And Garvin is looking for excuse to go out. You send him a message to come back. Where has he disappeared? Okay. So this stuff we had actually already covered before. Okay. Then we are covering it again because we are noticing that some people are not clear. I think we'll have to move a little faster now because uh, you have to just go back to the videos and and uh, teach yourself and make sure you're clear about the concepts. Phone is also in the class. Okay, never mind. Fine. Okay. So, um, all right. Now, but the Gulati did raise an important point, which is he was trying to figure out a formula. He was trying to figure out a formula as to when we will exercise. Now that formula that actually the question has already been answered by Sakshi Agarwal in the previous or two classes before, which is that you will always look at, so at what point do you exercise? Okay. When you are looking at the strike price versus the underlying price. Okay. Uh, what point do you exercise? Essentially, whenever the, the rule will be that whenever there is any positive intrinsic value, you should exercise. Is this clear? Okay, you also went out, even though Gulati had also gone out. Our door key, the door, he is nowhere. <laughs> Don't go out for such long periods. I had to go upstairs because he was cleaning inside the water. Okay, 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 fine, no problem. But just keep an eye because you, you, when you go out, I don't know how Bharat slipped out, but uh, okay. So we should hand over all the stuff to ro robots, you know, so the robot will stop you at the door. When one guy has gone out, the robot will count the students in the class. Okay. Now, all right. Uh, what were we talking about? Coming back, Gulati, you're back in time to answer your question, to the answer to your question. Okay. So, uh, now learn this also because you are not clear about it okay so we don't have time to go through a long interactive discussion okay but we will just give you the answer the question that but you did raise an important point you were trying to figure out a formula to decide as to when I should exercise whether it's a call or a put can we come up with a general formula and the general formula is which Sakshi had already uh, essentially highlighted for us the other day which is that you will look at it comes from the formula comes out of basically doing this exercise figuring out the two alternatives either you don't exercise or you exercise okay so if you don't exercise in this case let's say when the price is say uh, say uh, you're paid seven dollars so the price is 68 okay so the price is 68 and your strike is 70 okay if you don't exercise then you lose seven dollars okay but if you exercise you sell exercising gives you the right to sell at 70 you sell it at 70 and immediately square your position in the underlying asset at 68 you make a two dollar profit but is everyone is everyone following the steps one alternative is not to the underlying price is 68 at expiration you're holding a 70 put you paid seven dollars for that okay so in this case you have two alternatives either you don't exercise okay uh, uh, or you in, if you don't exercise you lose seven dollars is that clear yes, you paid seven dollars now if you exercise then you get to sell at 70 and immediately you can square the underlying asset at 68 in the market you can buy back at 68 so you make a two dollar profit is everyone following please nod aggressively so that i can yes, you know sir. yeah 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 that's what like imagine that i'm paying head, head banging music or something so everybody not like that yeah so because i need to see clear indications huh? people are sitting like zombies in the class I, I need to figure out whether you have understood or not how will i what yes, near near halloween no no because i need to because one of the problems i have is i i find it very difficult to move on if people are looking blank how can i just move on to the next topic okay so you need to give me a clear-cut indication that you have understood okay so that i can move on okay guys yeah this is an important point okay so if you don't exercise you lose seven dollars if you exercise you sell at 70 okay you uh, you sell at 70 and immediately you uh, buy it back at 68 okay so you make two dollar profit so your net PNL is now minus five so instead of the other alternative where you're losing seven okay so therefore you should exercise in this situation the rule is basically you can look at what is if there's any positive intrinsic value in the option you should exercise this is the rule that you're going to apply is this clear 
for the exercise of part of the room. When should you exercise? Is this clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So quickly running through, make sure you go through all the stuff. Payoffs and profit profiles. I'm not going to go through all this in great detail. Profit from now. Whenever you look at now, so the formula I was trying to teach you. I was trying to teach you some basic principles. How to identify? Okay. Now you're seeing a constant. This part is a profit or loss. Profit. Constant profit. Constant profit means immediately it should tell you that this is talking about what profile? Long or short options? Short options. Because when you go short options, like the insurance company selling car insurance, when you are going short options, you collect money because you get the premium. Because when you are going short, the other guy is going long. That fellow has to pay you the premium. So if you are seeing any line above the zero line, constant amount above the zero line for many scenarios, that means these are the scenarios where you are collecting upfront premium as an option seller. And these are the scenarios where the other fellow is not has no incentive to exercise the option. All right. So another way you can figure it out is see if you see this, how will you figure out whether this is a call or a put? You look at this, you can see straight away this is a short position and an option, either call or put. Yes. Because only in a short position do you have a constant profit scenario. Okay? Because the premium is there to you, where they're available for you when the other guy does not exercise his option. Okay. So and then you see which part of the strike? You can see the strike, the strike is hundred. Okay. Now below the hundred strike, when the price is below hundred, since Garvit is getting restless, we should check take a check on the time. And you guys should also look at this uh, message that comes up on the when you are if you put in a bond price, we'll we'll do that some other time. Okay. Uh, but look at this one more formula that I can give you, one more way of thinking about it logically. It's not a mugging kind of approach. Which part of the graph is showing up constant profit? Constant profit means straight away short option profile. Could be a call or a put. Now is it a call or is it a put? Now another way to think about it. Which part? It's a stri 100 strike call. Okay. And this remember this constant profit scenario straight away means what? That you collected car insurance premium and the car did not crash. Yes. So you just pocket the premium as an insurance company. Okay. No claim to be paid out. Right. So this is a situation where that that means all the strikes below 100, the gu other guy does not have any incentive to exercise the option. OK, so if the other guy is not exercising when the when the underlying asset price is below the strike, when do you not exercise when there is a when there is no ex when there is no uh, when the underlying uh, when the underlying asset price is below the strike? When you look at this strike price of 100, okay, when, I, my question is, I have not phrased my question properly, okay. My, my point I am trying to emphasize here, you can think about this later and work it out for yourself, that the constant profit is being shown for strikes below 100, Yes. Sir. okay. The strike price is 100, you are the seller of the option, okay. If the other guy is not exercising the option when the underlying asset price is below the strike, okay, that means what kind of option is it? Call or put? Call. Has to be a call because the market is below the strike price. Yes. So what is the guy saying? Why is he not exercising? He's not exercising because he's saying market the market price is below the call strike. So why should I buy at 100 by using exercising the call? Yes. By exercising the call when the underlying asset price is $80, let's say, or $90. <coughs> is this clear? Yes. Are you following the logic? There are different ways. By going through these kind of exercises, you can also learn more about, you can solidify your learning about the basics of options. Because as we can see, even the basics are not clear for many people. Right? You need to work on your basics. If the basic foundation has to be first clear, then you can build on it on your own later on. Is this clear? Okay. Now we can let you go. One last point I'll mention about this, <laughs> then you can see. One second, just give me one second here. Look at this, look at this uh, bonds trading on alternative trading systems. Okay. So here, these quotes are not trading quotes. I've got a price of a Tesla bond in here. That's why this is showing. Okay. I have to hit OK here. These, when you look at alternative trading systems, okay, these are known as indicative prices. Okay. 
should know this term these are indicative prices these are not firm prices these are firm prices these are futures prices okay these are firm prices you can trade on them there's a difference in the market you should know these terms did you know these terms indicative price versus firm price when you listen to broker voice boxes in a trading room the broker will be asking are you firm are you firm which means can i hit you on that price or is this an indicative price so these option these tesla bonds these are tesla corporate bonds with a coupon of there's a coupon of 5.3 percent due in august of 20 august uh, i can't be august 15 2015 has already passed yeah 2025 5.3 percent coupon tesla bonds due 2025 15th august okay these prices are indicative prices which means you can't trade on these prices you will have to do what is called an rfq request for quote okay basically a request for a firm quote and then you will be able to trade on it this is again an aspect of markets you learn something else also new indicative prices versus firm prices firm prices are also called dealing prices okay the broker may be asked are able to uh, might ask you are you is that a dealing price okay is this clear okay so i've taken three minutes extra of your time let's hope the video